everybody, it's Lindy. Okay, so here we go with another viewer requested video. So it seems like a lot of people have been having some problems with buyers. Um, different kinds of problems, you know, return problems, uh, non-paying bidder problems, you know, just problems in general. And I think a lot of people are wanting to hear what kind of stuff I have dealt with and how I've handled it. Um, so, you know, whether you've been a reseller for a long time or you're just getting started, just know first off that this stuff happens to everybody. I promise it's not just you. So I'm going to try to stay on topic and not get off topic because there's another video that I have planned and that's for do you do auctions or buy it now? Which should I choose? And so some of this is going to kind of fall into that. So I'm going to try to stay on topic and leave that for another video. But I will say this, I will leave you with this little nugget. My problems have gotten better since I stopped auctions. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, first, let's talk about returns. I hate them. Everybody hates them, right? Especially if you do free shipping because even if the buyer pays return shipping, you're out that initial shipping fee. You know, that's why I don't ever want to do free shipping that's over like five bucks because that's a lot of money out of pocket. You know, I usually get one, maybe two returns a month. It's not that, you know, crazy. I sell... 150, 200 items a month, give or take, maybe. And so one or two returns in a month with that kind of volume, it's, you know, 1%. It's not, it's nothing crazy. It's nothing that, you know, I want to hang myself about. You know, a couple of returns. Mostly it's because, you know, women buy clothes that don't fit, but it happens. It's going to happen. I have had my share of buyers messaging me after they've received their item and saying that they were disappointed in it. Um, strangely enough, though, it doesn't always result in a return. You know, sometimes you can give them a partial refund and they're perfectly happy. You know, I had mentioned in one of my previous videos that um, it was the buying from dollar stores video. I'll link it below if you're interested, if you haven't seen it. But there was a tumbler cup and someone had commented to me that it was smaller than they expected it to be. You know, they only paid $7.99 with free shipping, so I only made a couple of bucks on it. But they weren't pleased when they got it and said that it was smaller than they expected it to be. And so I just simply replied back to them, you know, I'm I'm really sorry. Um, you know, were you expecting 14 ounces to be more than it was? Is there anything I can do? You know, just be nice. You know, look at it from the buyer's perspective. They paid for something. They received it. It wasn't quite what they expected. Always be nice. Because if you act in any way like it's the buyer's fault, they're going to get mad. Like, that buyer in particular simply just said, no, it's okay. You know, it's, it is what I expected. It's just a little bit smaller. I'll be fine. Thanks for the reply. End of story. It was done. It was gone. That was dealt with. You know, who knows what could have happened if I would have replied a different way or told them, I don't know why you're dissatisfied. It's exactly what I told you you were going to get. See what I'm saying? Always be nice. Another one, coincidentally, was one that I mentioned in a rant in one of my sourcing videos. Um, you know, a woman got a shirt and it didn't fit her. She said it was the smallest double extra large she's ever tried to put on. And she couldn't pull it on over her chest, apparently. So I just simply replied, I am so sorry it doesn't fit. Um, you are more than welcome to return it for a full refund if you would like. Just let me know what you would like to do. You know, give the power to the buyer, right? She never replied. She never opened a return. Granted, she still has, you know, some time before she can open a return, but she hasn't opened a return yet. I'm hoping that she realizes, hey, it was eight bucks. I'm just going to let it go. Um, but I mean, she never replied to me. So I did my part. 
we'll see what she does. Sometimes that's just how it goes. Sometimes the buyer just wants to be heard and wants you to reply. And once they know you care, they'll drop it. They'll leave it alone. Another situation that I had was a gentleman bought a lot of four diaper rash. It was like diaper rash spray. It wasn't a diaper rash cream. It was a Dr. Smith's diaper rash spray. And he bought a lot of four of them from me. And they were all brand new. I'm talking the spray bottle was still completely wrapped in the factory seal. I mean, there was no way to take the cap off. There was no way to spray anything out. It was brand spanking new. And he bought like, it was like four for $35 or something like that. Four of these. And he messaged me and said, one of the four bottles doesn't work. It doesn't spray. I keep pushing down on it and it's not spraying. This instance really sucks for me. It really sucks for me because obviously I did not manufacture this item. It was factory sealed. There was no way for me to test the product to make sure that it functioned the way it was supposed to function and it's not functioning. I can't call the buyer a liar because you can't do that. So he was clearly unhappy because he thought he was getting four. He only has three working ones. So I simply messaged him back and said, I am so sorry that it's not working. I'm sure you noticed that they were all factory sealed. So there was no way for me to test the quality of the product. I am hoping that you will accept a 20% discount or rather, I'm sorry, 20% refund. Um, I wish that I had another to mail to you. Ha, huh? so you gotta add that in there. I wish I had another to mail to you to replace it, but unfortunately I'm completely out of stock. Will you accept this partial refund? And waited and waited and waited to hear back. And finally, he responded back. Get this, no that's okay. It's not your fault. There was no way for you to know. Sometimes buyers can really surprise you. Does that kind of thing happen all the time? No, it doesn't, but it's nice when it happens every once in a while. Kill them with kindness, I'm telling you. And then, you know, there's been other times where I've sent, you know, five, um, let's see, there was one instance where there was a woman who bought five tubes of children's shampoo and she received them and said one leaked one leaked now whenever i ship liquids i always individually wrap each item so if there is a leak then it doesn't leak all over everything especially if there's more than one item in the package she said it leaked it and she says i don't know how much it leaked i just know that it leaked and it was only one of five tubes. So, you know, again, I responded to her message. I am so sorry that it leaked. Um, will you accept a 20% partial refund because 25 or 20% is one fifth of what she paid because she was expecting five and you know, when I was going above and beyond, I mean, she can still use the product, you know, she didn't even say that a ton leaked out, but I still wanted to keep her happy because I would much rather give her, you know, a $4 partial refund than have her get mad and give me bad feedback. I mean, that's what we want to do by responding to these messages from the buyers that might be a little bit dissatisfied. We are saving ourselves negative feedback. Protect the feedback. So she was perfectly happy with taking, you know, a $4 partial refund. And she left me positive feedback, saying that I was a pleasure to deal with. Huh. <laughs> me being a pleasure to deal with. Who can imagine? So bottom line is if a buyer messages you wanting some sort of a resolution, just be nice. Be nice. Be willing to give them a partial refund to avoid having to take a return. But what do you do if they open a return against you? What do you do? Let eBay walk you through the steps. Handling a return is not hard. It's really not. 
eBay will send you a message letting you know that the buyer has requested a return and all you have to do is read through the details and see what they said and hit accept. That's all you have to do. You can specify that a buyer has to pay return shipping in your listing. However, if the buyer opens a return as an item not as described, then the seller has to pay return shipping. That part kind of sucks. But if you are detailed enough in your listings and you're truthful in your listings, and if there's clothing, if you have measurements or whatever, then the buyer has no reason to return the item because they know exactly what they're getting. If you are deceptive and you don't list any flaws or if somebody if you list something as a certain size and somebody gets it and they're like wow this doesn't fit me like a normal extra large does for instance because all brands kind of do fit women differently then yeah they're gonna say an item not as described and you're gonna have to pay return shipping but if you get that notification of a return it's not the end of the world you know, the buyer can print the shipping label and ship it back to you and then you just resell it. And sometimes a buyer will open a return and not even send it back. This happened to me recently. I had somebody open a return item case, not as item, not as described, but just saying that the, that the jeans didn't fit them and they started the return process and they never printed a label. And here's the thing with that. When someone items, or items, <laughs> when someone opens a return item case, after they open that case, eBay gives them five days to print a label and send it back to you. That's it. It's not like they can open the case and just sit on it for a month. They have five days after they open a return to send it back to you. And this person in particular, they never sent it back to me. So eBay was like, hey, did this person send you back the item? Because eBay knows that they've opened a case and you haven't submitted a refund yet. eBay contacted me, hey, did you ever get this item back? And I just said, no, they never sent it. And they closed the case, which means I get to keep the money. The buyer keeps the jeans that apparently don't fit them. Why they would open a case and not return, I don't know. I don't care. I got to keep the money. Let's talk about these non-paying bidders. Oh, I have a story. Everybody knows I like stories, right? Okay, so this is one of the reasons why I do buy it nows and not auctions. I am going to try to stay on track and not go off onto a tangent about that. So recently, and when I say recent, I mean a few months ago, I had a pair of Miss Me jean shorts that were really nice. They had lots of really nice embellishments on them. Um, two people bid them up. It was a bidding war. And the jean shorts went from $24.99 starting bid to almost $50. Bucks. And I was super excited about that. And so then, of course, what happens? Can you guess? You have a 50-50 chance of getting this right. Just take a shot in the dark. Yeah, the winning better never paid. What ended, up, what ended up happening was I have it set up in my account to where eBay will automatically open a non-paying bidder case when it has gone five days without getting a payment. I have it set up to do that. Um, just because I don't want to have to stay on it. I have enough stuff to do. So, you know, I figure five days is more than enough time for someone to get their act together and pay for the item that they bid it on. So, five days went by, or four days went by, I'm sorry. Four days went by, and I sent, I had sent this buyer a invoice every single day every single day for four days and they never paid so on that fourth day I sent them an invoice and I also sent them a message that said just so that you know today is your last day to pay before eBay opens an unpaid item case against you and they responded back to me I get paid on Monday I promise I'll pay on Monday do you think they paid on Monday do you Monday comes around and they don't pay. 
So after a case gets opened up, the buyer has four days to pay. Otherwise, the case gets closed and they get a hit on their account and the seller is welcome to do a second chance offer to somebody or just relist it and sell it. So this Monday they were gonna pay was day two of the um, case being open. So after Monday, they still had two days. And so, but by now it's been, you know, over a week since the auction ended. I've had this item sitting for a week. Okay. It was annoying. So after this Monday came and went, the next day I sent the buyer a message that said, hey, just so you know, you only have two days left to pay for this item before eBay closes the case against you. I didn't hear anything back. A little while later, they sent me a message back saying, I'm so sorry. I completely forgot. I will pay it today. Do you think they paid? Do ya? Do ya? That night came and went, and guess what? They didn't pay! Go figure! Who would have thought? So then, on that last day, that last fourth day of the case being open, I sent them a message saying, Hello, buyer. Just so you know, today is the absolute last day to pay without having eBay close the case and have a mark on your account as a non-paying bidder. And they sent me a message back that completely caught me off guard. Completely off guard. It was like a paragraph long, there was a lot of caps in it, and it was all about how they had tried to pay me a hundred times, and PayPal wasn't working, and they're getting sick and tired of having to deal with this, and just a whole bunch of bull. And I knew it was crap because I had received hundreds of dollars in payments from other buyers over the last week and a half. So the reason why PayPal was glitching for her and wasn't sending her money to me was because she never processed the payment. I'm not stupid. So the case closed automatically after four days. And <laughs> this is the part that upsets me. This is why I get so mad about this, okay? This happened in September. How many people are looking to buy shorts at the end of September getting into October? Not many. So I did a second chance offer for the other bidder and I got a response back from them that they had already found the shorts that they wanted and they were fine. So now I have a pair of shorts that I'm trying to sell out of season. Did I sell the shorts? Yes. I ended up selling the shorts. I sold the shorts for $30. I made like a $15 profit, which was nice, but a $15 profit was nothing like the, you know, $30 profit that I was expecting that I didn't get because of this non-paying bidder. Let's talk about what to do when a bidder doesn't pay. This is the same for non-paying bidders as it is for if someone submits you a best offer, you accept their best offer, and then they don't pay. It, this, this whole thing works for both sides, whether they bid and didn't pay or best offer and haven't paid yet. According to eBay, you have to give them 48 solid hours to pay, and that should be business days. Sunday, Saturdays and Sundays shouldn't count but you have to give the buyer two full days to pay. You have to. Um, most seller accounts default to have eBay open unpaid item cases after five days. You can specify that eBay can do that for you in a shorter time, like if you only wanna give them two days, um, or you can opt out of having eBay do it and you can just do it yourself automatically. But you have to give them at least two days. After two days, you can open a case, either letting eBay do it automatically or you can open it manually through your uh, seller resolution center. And after an unpaid item case gets opened, they then have four full business days to pay. 
The crappy thing is, if you've given them their initial two days, and then you're waiting another four days to receive your payment, that's a week. You're waiting a week for your money. And if they don't pay, they get a hit on their account, yes, but then you have to resell it. And that's kind of a bummer. Real short and sweet, how do you avoid this? The only way to avoid it is buy it now and require immediate payment. That's what I do. That immediately cuts out the possibility of somebody just bidding and not paying to do buy it now. But I'm leaving that for another video. That's just my quickie little two cents. Just a little nugget, just a little tidbit. Um, as for buy it now, or not buy it now, bleh, as for best offer, um, I am also anti best offer, but that's more content for another video. Even though I don't accept best offers on my items, I know a lot of people swear by it. People love best offer. Who knows? Maybe I'll get into it in the future. But for now, I don't like dealing with lowball offers. I don't like dealing with lowball offers. But believe it or not, even though I don't have best offers on my items, I still get lowball offers. I do. I get them. And it's annoying. I will seriously have messages in my eBay inbox of people asking me to take lower prices for things. And the thing that I find the most aggravating about it is because it's disgusting lowball offers. Like seriously lowball offers. One of the most recent ones was I have a pair of scrub pants that have been sitting and sitting and sitting and haven't sold. So I have dropped the price to $8. $8 is literally, literally the lowest that I can take without going in the hole. It's the lowest I can take. It's the lowest that I can take where it'll pay for the shipping, it'll pay for the fees, and it'll pay for my cost and maybe give me a dollar just so I didn't waste my time too much. So I have it rock bottom price. But you better believe that I still get messages asking for lower than that. So I see that you have these scrub pants for $8. Would you take three by any chance? $3 with free shipping? That won't even pay the shipping cost to get it to you. God. So what do I do when that happens? I put on a smile and I type back and I simply say, well, unfortunately, $8 is the absolute lowest that I can take for the item without going in the hole. So thank you very much for looking. Smiley face. But wouldn't you know it, she still countered back. What about $5? And that is why I don't put best offers on my listings because even without best offers, I still get crap offers like that. So I can only imagine the flood of them that I would get if I actually put best offer in the listing. But that's just me. That's just me. Something else that's kind of on those same lines is the sob stories. And this is probably going to seem really, really harsh. And so I'm, I'm going to try to leave all of, you know, the lighthearted stuff aside and talk to you about this because I do get a lot of sob stories um, that are asking for a cheaper buy price. You know, I've had people send me messages asking if I would please accept a lower price for this item, you know, like, uniforms or clothing items, children's items. You know, I will get messages from people asking me to take a lower price because they're really struggling. They just lost their job. You know, they really need this shirt for work or they really need these shoes for their kid. Um, and they ask me to take a lower price. And the problem with that is you don't know if they're telling the truth or not. You don't. And it could just be somebody looking to 
con you into a cheaper price. And it's really, really sad that you even have to worry about something like that, you know? And here's the thing. I price all of my items very, very fairly. You know, I don't have anything in my store that's crazy outrageous in cost. It's really not. So I already price my stuff bottom line. So if I were to price things lower just because somebody asked me to, then I really would go out of business, you know? So when I receive a question like that or a request to take a less price because of something bad happening in somebody's life, regardless of whether or not it's actually factual, I just respond to them that I'm really sorry that they're having a rough time right now, but I have my own family that I'm trying to support and I already have the item priced as low as I can take without losing money. And I thank them very much for looking and I hope that they will consider purchasing my item since it is the lowest price that, you know, maybe they could find for that particular item. Usually people don't respond back after that. Sometimes they say thank you. Sometimes they still buy it even. It just really depends. But you have to be super careful and not let people con you because we are in this business to make money. And as long as you price things fairly, people really have no reason to ask for a cheaper price. But you know, it really does hurt my heart when someone sends me a message telling me that they're struggling and they're in need of something. Um, but you can't help everybody. I mean, you can't. I have another story. You want to hear it? It's about why I have this view and why I don't lower prices or make exceptions for people anymore. There was an item. It was a plush. It was a really cool dinosaur from Build-A-Bear Workshop. And I had somebody send me a message asking if I could please not require buy it now. They really, really wanted it for their kid. It was a birthday and so on and so forth. And they just needed to wait for their paycheck and they wanted to make sure that they got this item and they were just waiting on their paycheck. So I said, okay. And I took off require immediate payment and they bought it. And they had told me that they were going to get paid the following Friday. So it was going to be about a week. So the unpaid item case was going to open. It was going to happen. And I told them that. I told them that eBay was going to open a case because it was going to be longer than five days. And they assured me that they would pay. They assured me that they would pay. So they bought it. They did not have to, to uh, pay immediately because I unchecked the little require box. Do you think they paid? eBay opens the case. They never pay. I have to wait it out again. And then before I know it, two weeks have gone by where I had to deal with this whole non-paying person. I'm so over it. So now I've come to the point where I don't make exceptions anymore. I don't. If someone wants to buy something, they have to pay for it when they buy it. There's no more waiting for paydays. There's no more holding items. There's none of that anymore. I've been burned and I don't like it. But you know what? You live and you learn. If you know you feel it in your heart to hold something for somebody until a payday, or if you feel it in your heart to lower a price for somebody who messaged you saying that they were struggling and needed a cheaper price, then that's on you. But me, I've had my share. I'm so over it. So bottom line, if you run into a problem with a buyer, just contact eBay. You know, eBay is really good about 
opening cases and talking to you and talking you through the process. The help page on eBay is also very helpful if you have any questions. You can just search a few keywords and it should take you to the forum that you need to find the answers that you're looking for. So, but the main things to remember, if a buyer wants to return something, it's not a huge deal. It happens to everybody, you know, they have five days to print off a return label. You don't always have to pay the return fee. You can specify in your listing whether or not it's buyer paid shipping back. Um, but if it is an item not as described, you do have to pay for it. If you accept a best offer from somebody and they don't pay, or if you get a bidder that doesn't pay, you have to give them two days to pay. And if they don't pay, you can open a case. And then they have four days to pay after that. And then if they still don't pay, they get a knock on their eBay account and you just relist the item, you know? And then as for accepting best offers in general, that's on you if you want to accept best offers or if you don't. If you do get messages from somebody, just be very leery about those sob stories because it could just be somebody looking to get a better deal. I hope this video was helpful. <laughs> I hope that um, you now see that it happens to everybody. You know, if you're dealing with a non-paying bidder or, you know, a non-paying best offer, if you're dealing with returns, it happens to everybody. It really does. So if you like this video, <laughs> give me a thumbs up. If you found it helpful, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed to me yet, I hope that you will. If you have any questions for me related to the video, you can leave them in the comments or you can email me. My email is in the link below or in the the video description. <sighs> oh my goodness, you guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you with my next video. Bye.